Hello and welcome back and today I want to look at two older generation Synology. I say older generation, they're still currently in the existing 2018-19 series from Synology and by that I mean they're currently available. We're still not seeing any upgrades to these devices at the moment in the first quarter of 2019 and a number of you that are looking to buy your first, second or tenth NAS right now are finding yourself looking at a four base Synology like these two but they are very very similar indeed and we already once did a comparison between these two devices in an older video but because that was at the moment of release of these devices I thought it worth revisiting these two and seeing about which one is better suited to your data storage needs. So on this side we have the Synology DS918 Plus. It's about 420 quid give or take without tax and without the hard drive media and of these two it is easily the more powerful of the two of them. On this side we have the DS418 Play. Now the 418 Play is they say far more geared towards multimedia needs and the price for this is around about 380. So there's about a 50 to 60 quid difference between these devices where you buy when you include tax and stuff like that. So, which one of these two devices should you go for? Well, of the two of them, over time and time and again, I've been recommending people to go for the 918. The reason being that even, you know, on previous videos, such as the one when me and Eddie the web guy debated the versatility of these two devices, you just get a lot more for your money. The 918 arrived with the J3455 quad-core CPU at 1.5 GHz per core that can be burst up to 2.3 GHz. Once again, per core on all four of those cores. It also arrived with 4 GB of DDR3L memory that can be upgraded officially to 8 GB and unofficially, shh, tell no one, to 16 GB. The DS418 Play arrived with a dual-core CPU, the J3355, with at the time of release, it was one of the first NATs ever to feature that CPU, and that CPU has hence been used in a number of other devices. It supports 4K transcoding to a great degree, and that does cover H.264 and 265, although I will say it does struggle a little bit with H.264 sometimes. On top of that, it arrives with that dual-core CPU, the J3355, that is a 1.5, uh, sorry, a 2.0 GHz CPU that can be burst up to 2.5 GHz per core and it arrives with 2 GB of DDR3L memory that can be upgraded up to 6 GB officially. So, between the two of them there's obviously an enormous amount um, of advantages in terms of hardware with this device. It's also worth highlighting that this device on the base lets you install NVMEs, NVMe SSDs, to vastly improve internal operation speeds. Now, of course, that won't largely affect the outside external connection of, to your data because you're going to be limited to one or two GBE connectivity, whether you use one or both of these LAN ports via link aggregation. If we look at the bottom of the 418, we don't have any NVMe SSD slots. And if we look at the back, we've got those two LAN ports. We've got the same level of external connectivity on the, let's get those lined up straight, the 918 and the 418 Play, but it's worth highlighting that there are better ways to improve the internal operation speed on this device with things like NVMe SSDs, that quad-core CPU, and of course you can upgrade the memory further. So between the two of these, and remember that price difference isn't exactly massive, it's worth saying that the 418 Play doesn't seem to have the future-proofing of the 918. Likewise, this device here arrives with two years of manufacturer's warranty, whereas the 918 arrives with three years of manufacturer's warranty. So better and longer coverage overall for your money. Finally, both of them arrive with support for things like BTRFS, that great uh, file system that lets you be far more, um, you know, uh, you can do snap, uh, snapshot background uh, checks on your data. It's uh, better levels of data integrity and file self-healing. Both of them support SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID, alongside things like RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6. These devices also support Synology's Hybrid RAID system that lets you mix and match hard drives inside. Um, also, before I turn it around, it's worth mentioning that this device here has an expansion port, so you can add a further five bays of storage, meaning this device can go from a four bay NAS, once you add the five DX517, to a nine bay worth of storage array, whereas this device does not have that expandability. There's only the one USB port on this, actually I'll say that, one on the front, one on the back. This has one on the front, one on the back, and eSATA. Now, in terms of hardware, I think I've made a fairly, you know, compelling case to say 
that you get more for your money with the 918. But it's worth also saying in terms of software, Disk Station Manager also performs a great deal better on the 918 too. Because of that CPU inside there, it opens the doors to things like virtualization with its uh, virtual machine manager software, as well as better multitasking when using multiple applications and of course Plex as well, because this will let you utilize hardware transcoding um, with the Plex Media Server application if you enable um, a transcoding as an option in a Plex Pass membership, whereas the 418 has support of software transcoding in Plex, but as for hardware transcoding in Plex, I think it may have been enabled by now, but the last time I checked, about four months ago, you still couldn't utilize hardware transcoding on the DS418 Play via Plex Media Server, even with a Plex Pass. You had to utilize software transcoding, which utilizes more of the internal hardware specifications. Now, that bring that point to transcoding, we can talk about media, because both of these play multimedia very, very well. But if the only thing you care about is the playback of media and none of the other business stuff or using any of those great first party applications, chances are the 418 is going to do the job well and there's no need to spend that extra money. Don't get me wrong, I still think you're choosing the weaker of the two in the long run in terms of future proofing, but if all you care about is the playback of media in 4K natively, this is probably the device for you and you don't need to spend extra as the conversation with Eddie more than a year ago went. But the 918 for me is still one of the best NASes we've seen in the last 18 months to two years, and I'll be very interested to see how Synology can top this bad boy. So right now, if you're looking for a four-bay Synology NAS, it's not, I can tell you right now, I don't think it's worth waiting for any more announcements, because this bad boy has got it all going on for you right now, and it's affordable. If there is a follow-up to this, I reckon it's gonna be closer to that 500 quid mark. There is a five-bay version of this, but again, it costs more. Um, this device here, the 918, is available from the guys at Span.com, as is the Play. And if you are interested in more than multimedia, if you're interested in being able to do more with your data overall for home and or business, then this is definitely one to consider. Both of them support surveillance station and a whole host of cameras, but I will say the 918 supports more cameras of a higher quality simultaneously in surveillance station 8.2. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this. I know we've got a more fuller version of these uh, units being compared and of course software comparisons in older videos, so I do recommend you check them out. But right now, in the first quarter of 2019, if you're gonna choose between these two, I heartily recommend the 918. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.